Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is Physics Chapter 3, Vectors, Video 3. Today's topic is Adding Vectors Graphically, Part 2. The objectives for today is to know the properties of vectors, understand how to tail and a parallelogram methods are equivalent, the relationship between resultant and equilibrant, be able to determine the range of the resultant of two vectors. A vector can be moved. A vector is a quantity with a magnitude and a direction. If vectors a and b have the same magnitude and same direction, then a equals to b. For example, all these three vectors have the same magnitude and same direction. Therefore, they are equivalent. Since they are equivalent, that means you can move a vector a to any place as long as it has the same magnitude and direction, it is the same. Tail to tail or parallelogram method is the same as head to tail or head to tail because vectors can be moved. Let's, for example, a plus b, what is that equals to? So there are two ways to do it. First, let's do parallelogram method, tail to tail. We draw a parallelogram method and diagonal is the resultant. Tail and tail touching for vectors to be added. Resultant is a diagonal. If we do head to tail or tip to tail, we draw vector A first, so then we draw vector B at the tip of A continually. The resultant is from the tail of A to the tip of B. And we have this resultant. So tip and tail touch for vectors to be added. Resultant is the first tail to the last tip. Remember in the uh, head to tail method, the resultant is always arrow and arrow connecting together. As you can see, these two R's, they have the same magnitude and same direction. So it's really doesn't matter which way you add them, they are equivalent to each other. Let's take a look at this example. The diagram below represents a force vector A and a resultant vector R. Which force vector B below could be added to force vector A to produce the resultant R? So what is B? So A plus which of this B can be equivalent to R. So let's move the vector A over here, move the vector R over here. So here is R, so A plus what? The B has to be this. So tip to tail, A plus B equals to R. So which one is the same as this B? Obviously it's choice B. The properties of vectors. So the uh, first is commutative property. That means a plus b equals to b plus a. Orders doesn't matter. Next one is associative. So a you can do a plus b first, then plus c, or you can do b plus c first, and then you add to a. They are equivalent. So additive identity means there is a vector 0 such that a plus 0 equals to a and equals to 0 plus a for all vector a. Additive inverse. For any vector a, there is a vector negative a, such that a plus negative a equals to 0. Negative a is also called equilibrant of a. Distributive vector, if r is a scalar quantity times vectors a plus vector b, you can distribute r. So that equals r, scalar quantity r times a plus scalar quantity r times b. You can also distribute scalar for example you have a scalar for example 2 plus 3 times a vector a that equals to 2 times a plus 3 times a associative scalar means 2 times parentheses number 3 times a is the same as 2 times 3 which is 6 times a and multiplicative identity is for the real number 1 1 times a equals a for each um, vector a. So for this, um, uh, for this chapter, we are really more concentrated on commutative uh, and additive and associative. Those are three properties. So let's to uh, talk about additive inverse or equilibrant. So equilibrant of vectors a plus b is a vector that can produce equilibrant uh, with the result in R. What is R? R equals A plus B. 
So the equilibrium vector of A plus B is just the inverse of R. So equilibrium equals a negative R. So equilibrium is opposite of resultant R. For example, how do we find equilibrium of A plus B? So to find equilibrium of A plus B first, you have to do A plus B. Find the resultant using parallelogram method. You would draw a parallelogram, then here is R. The equilibrium is just opposite of R. That is the equilibrium. Let's see, here is the animation of A, B, C, D, E. They all add together. So there are different ways to add it. You can do A plus B plus C plus D plus E, or you can do different order, D plus E plus A plus B plus C, or switch it around. Take a look, it doesn't matter what order you have, your R is the same. So the title of this slide should be the commutative property of vectors. Okay, any vector A plus B, the resultant is always less, le less than or equals to the magnitude of A plus B and greater or equals to the difference between the magnitude. So this has to be the absolute value of the difference between the magnitude. Let's take a look at this animation. Vector 8 is blue, blue vector, and a green vector. As the angle increases, you can see the resultant decrease. So the, the resultant is greatest when it is 0 degrees. 14, the, re the resultant is minimum when it is 180 degrees. So the resultant between vector 6 and vector 8 is always less than or equals to 14 and greater or equals to 2. That is A plus B and a greater or equals to the absolute value between the two magnitude. So as the angle between vectors A and B increases from 0 to 180 degrees, the magnitude of the resultant decreases. The smaller the angle, however, the greater the resultant. Similar, uh, the opposite is true. That means the bigger the angle, the smaller the resultant. So the, res uh, the resultant of vectors A plus B is maximum when the angle between vector A and B is 0 degrees. That's in this case, that's 14. The resultant is minimum is when the angle between A and B is 180 degrees. In that case, is 2. So the sum of vectors or the resultant can be any number between the maximum of magnitude A plus magnitude B and a minimum of absolute value of magnitude A minus magnitude of B. Let's do a couple of examples. As the angle between the two concurrent forces decrease, what happens to the uh, magnitude of force required to produce equilibrium? Well, you, the force produced equilibrium is called equilibrium. Equilibrium is the opposite of resultant. So what happens to the resultant? When the angle between the two forces decreases, the resultant increase. If the resultant increase, the equilibrium has to increase. So the answer is 2. Another example. Two 20 Newton uh, force Forces act concurrently on object. Again, concurrently means at the same tail and the tail touch. What angle between these two force, forces will produce a resultant force with greatest magnitude? So we learned before the greatest magnitude is produced when the two angle has a minimum. Uh, the two angle is minimum, is zero degrees. That's the greatest magnitude will be produced. Another example. A 5 Newton force and 7 Newton force act concurrently on a point uh, as the angle between the forces is increased from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. The magnitude resultant of two uh, forces will change from what to what. Let's see, 0 degrees means you have a maximum force, which is 12, so it can be only 3 or 4. Now, the minimum one is 180 degrees. The minimum is the difference between the two. 
That is 7 minus 5 is 2, so the answer is 3. Another example. A 3 newton force and 4 newton force are acting concurrently on a point. Which force could not produce equilibrium with these two vectors? Let's see, 3 and 4 can produce a vector that has to be less than or equals to 7 and bigger than 1. So which one is not between those? So it's 9. 9 newtons is out of the range. So cannot produce equilibrium with 9 newtons. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.